What's up folks? So today we're going to talk about MailChimp because you have probably heard me going on and on about this email list stuff. And the thing is, in Dancing Nomads, my database has around like seven to 800 users and they're not on MailChimp. And if you have that many users, you'll probably want to put them on MailChimp because they'll make your email campaigns easier. So this is what this whole video is about because I was trying to import, write a script that imports my users from my database to MailChimp with all the dances that they do. So without further ado, we are using Go, uh, Golang for our backend, which means that we should probably use an API package that utilizes MailChimp and Go. So I went in Google and I found Hanzoai. If I'm butchering that name, but Hanzo I has a GoChimp 3, which is a Golang client for MailChimp API 3.0, which is the latest one. So if you look all the way down here in the, here in the bottom, they have install instructions, which is go get github.com zk slash forward slash GoChimp 3. And the usage here is pretty familiar. It has an API key, makes a client, it gets the list, and you get the the, the list ID from MailChimp. I'm not gonna go through that right now. I probably won't go through that because it's a quick Google session away on how to get your API keys from your list in MailChimp. And what they do here is they do add subscriber, which adds the user, in this case, it's it's hard-coded in, which adds the user to that list that they, that they, that they specified. And doing this list create member is what actually creates the member. So if you open this up, actually, then look into the members.go. If you go into here, members.go, that is where a lot of the value is because it gives you the functions that they have, one of them being create member. Now, like I said, create member would allow you to create a subscriber on MailChimp that doesn't already exist. If you want to update, then you want to call update member. Here's the catch me. So like I said, I'm using tags to kind of specify the dances that the users are dancing. So we have them set on our database and let's see if I could show you. Well, my database is not open because I restarted my computer. But at any rate, they have dances. And if I, let's see if I can actually pull that up. I don't wanna go there. Let's go to here because I'm already signed in probably. Let's hope I am, let's hope I am. Okay, so we, we're in the profile. So like I said, we have dances. Dances has its own separate table, the dances table in my database. And of course, I can set these to lead, follow, both, or NA. So if they're, if they're NA, then that means that we won't add them as tags on MailChimp. But if they're lead, follow, or both, then that means they have a pre-filled value, and then we will put them into our database. So for example, in this case, we have West Coast Swing and Zook. So when we do create member, then we will update MailChimp with that member, which is donnelly50 at gmail.com with those two dances as our tags. Clear? Okay. So let's take a look at the documentation because it's kind of confusing. So let's not look at member tags first. Let's look at members. So this members documentation refers to create member and update member. So here's the weird thing. On create, we just do a post the list and the list ID members. And you can see here that this create has actual, it accepts tags as a as a parameter, which is great because when we create a member, we could add tags. But when we do edit, which is update in our case, when we use put or patch, they actually do not have a tags array. <clears throat> so if you look down here, the last thing you see is the timestamp update. They do not have tags array. So the only way to add tags for us is use member tags. So you have to go do this list list ID member subscriber hash tags and we will pass in an array of tags and this array could have two properties 
the name and the status. And the status have two possible values, inactive and active. If it's inactive, then we will remove that tag from the user if it exists. If it's active and that tag does not already exist anymore, then we will just add that tag to that user on MailChimp. Clear as mud, fantastic. So you can see here that I already have some users and if I click into a keys, for example, they're just example users, not actually real users. You could see that this one does not actually have any tags, but let's go back to our tribe contacts. If I look at Jfish, you could see that Jfish have two tags, F for female, I don't know why I did it that way, and he has the tags Argentine Tango, which means that Jack actually dances Argentine Tango. So that's it. If I'm gonna show you some code next, and this is all you need to actually get things working. So if I go all the way to the top here, actually, let's do this. Let's do git status, and then I'm gonna show you all my models, git diff models, and then let's just show you everything so let's take a look so we have two things in dance.go that is where i am actually creating the member the subscriber on mailchimp if it doesn't exist because that's the first thing we hit whenever they hit that profile for the first time they're going to call that get dances and then we're going to check if a record for dances exists or not if it doesn't exist then we'll create the record of the dances in our database and at the same time, we'll create the user in MailChimp. So that's why we have this MailChimp create. And it's coming from MailChimp dances. So we're just kind of marking the path that we're coming along. Update dances is where you already have a record because you can't update dances without there being a record. So we just call it MailChimp update, MailChimp dance. The login here is, let's see, the two things that we added, we added MailChimp tags. Like I said, we have the tags have two properties name and status it can be active or inactive to add and remove tags respectively you need to add reflect and go chimp 3 here in order to for everything to work properly and here's the main function subscribe to mailchimp so what i'm doing here first is i'm creating a new dance object and i'm since every user has a dance then i'm preloading users first and then i'm i'm, I'm pretty much asking for all the dances and then I'm doing a reflect value. And what this does is it actually pulls out all the values of the dances in our dances table. So what it actually does is, let's take a look here. So we go look at the fields in our, or the properties in our dances table and we check those fields to check if they're empty. If they're not empty, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the name of that field. So for example, if we're talking about West Coast Swing, if we're going through all these dances, for example, we're looping through all these dances and these are all columns in, in our dances table. And once it finds that there is a dance that isn't NA, for example, West Coast Swing, then I'll take that and put that into this tags array. And this is really only for the create and the update, I think. So if you look down here, you can see that we are creating this ad subscriber like they showed us on the how to use on, on that documentation, you can see that I'm adding the tags and this subscribe is actually used, it's used here somewhere, actually. So it's used here, I think, yeah. So update member and create member. We also use that subscribe here in create member. If it's not an update because we're using a conditional here, then we're actually doing a MailChimp create. And once we do a create, we do a list create member, subscribe, and that'll create that in our database or in, in MailChimp. If we're do, using an update on the other hand, then if the path is from profile, and we wanna split this out because when we're doing an update, it doesn't actually update any tags. 
So if there's no, if the tags are empty or something, for example, then we don't need to update it. So if we're updating something like our birthday, because we're keeping track of the birthday here and gender, then actually the gender is gonna probably go, well, actually, the gender is gonna be used in tags and in the merge field. So if we're using, if they were, we're changing birthday and gender, we're gonna hit this MailChimp profile update and update the member to update that birthday and gender. Otherwise, if we're just updating tags, that means um, any profile or dances update, then because we're also using gender in tags, then we're gonna be calling this update with tags, which uses a different array, which uses the member tags. And what this member tags does is just a member, it's just an array of MailChimp tags, which we defined here. And you can see us actually creating that member tags array like we did with the tags array. So if there is an, uh, a value, if there, if there is a value in the column, then it's not empty, then we add the dance tag. Otherwise, it's empty, we remove the dance tag. And we just do the same here for gender with the tags and the member tags. And you know, if the gender is male, then we make active in the tags the 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 male and we make inactive the female and vice versa for the else for those gender confused people. But anyways, this is this other stuff is pretty much the same. Do note that for the birthday, you actually have to do this time parse RFC three 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 nine. They take the birthday in like month and then day date. So if my birthday is 12, 12, December 12, so it has to be like 12, 12. So that's how it'll look on MailChimp. And if we take a look here, you can see that the, the, that's the gender tag that we're talking about and dance tag that we're talking about. And the birthday is of this format and the gender is updated here. So I just wanted to go through that, that, oddity with you specifically with the tags because there's a whole thread here of these guys trying to figure it out and I should figure it out for them and yeah they're probably gonna kiss me for that because it was such a big problem and it's still not resolved yet so I think I'm just they're just gonna go through with my solution here but anyways if you're looking to import your database of users if you have a database of users like I do into MailChimp so you could run email campaigns to make money Full from from your email list, then this is probably the way you want to do it. If you're using a stack with Go as the backend, it's actually really really smooth if you run it. So I would really recommend you do it this way. If you don't, if you have any trouble, then feel free to ask me, and I'll, I'll see if I can help. But otherwise, I think this is pretty straightforward. Please join our mailing list if you haven't already. Join our Facebook group, and please rate, comment, subscribe to our channel, and I'll see you guys again next time. Take care.